All right, guys, here's a little dog, and uh, she's fixing to go home, and uh, the owners and I were talking about something I thought would make a good little YouTube video. Uh, Lucy's a little Aussie doodle, and she's very impulsive, right? She jumps up, she barks, she spins in circles, she runs out the door, and a lot of times it's easy when you have a dog that shows a lot of impulsivity like that. It's very easy to inadvertently pay extra attention to them when they're doing that kind of stuff, or it's easy to fall into a pattern of trying to, uh, you know, punish that misbehavior. We t choose to look at it a little bit differently. When we have a little dog like this that comes here, come on, Lucy, and they're really impulsive, then what we try to do is we try to work on developing patterns that help the dog develop attention span and impulse control. All right, now, so this little dog gets up every morning and in her quest to bring order to her own day, she tries a thousand different things. Uh, it's kind of similar to, uh, I, I know a lot of you out there watching this channel, you feel like this because I feel like this a lot of times. I get up and I've got a thousand things I wanna work on that day, you know, but it's obvious that you can't get a thousand things done. So I have to focus on getting 10 things done. And then so I break a thousand things up into 10 unit increments. When you have a little impulsive dog or even a big impulsive dog, if you take your day and you chop your day up, instead of thinking about like, what am I gonna do all day? What am I gonna do the next 10 minutes? What am I gonna do the next 30 minutes? What am I gonna do the next hour? If you break your day up into smaller time increments, then how you fill up the time and how you shape this dog's behavior through patterns becomes uh, very evident, okay? So what we do with this little dog who has a natural tendency towards being impulsive, okay? We get up early in the morning and first thing when we go out for our exercise and elimination walk, okay, is we get them moving. There is an inverse relationship between exercise and anxiety and anxiety is a pattern killer, guys. It's an accomplishment killer. If you have a bunch of things on your mind, and you're anxious about whether or not you're gonna get them done, you're not getting anything done, okay? Well, it's the same thing with the dog. So these little dogs like this, they'll get up and they're thinking, I wanna get some attention from mom and I wanna get some attention from Anna Grace and I wanna get some attention from dad and I wanna go down the street and I wanna see Aunt Jody. Whatever's in this dog's mind, it's wanting to do it all at once. And we're like, no, slow down. We have a few things to do, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is gonna go on a walk, burn up some energy, and we're going to eliminate in the proper spot, right? Because hygiene, I mean, that's the most important thing of the day. So now we've got one thing out of the way. We've went, we've walked, and we've eliminated in the right spot. Well, listen, that's a good way to start today because now the dog is in a physical state where it can concentrate on the next thing. Dog gets up, you start trying to teach it something before it's had a chance to potty, not gonna be successful. First thing, get up, exercise the dog, give it a chance to potty, give it a chance to settle, right? Now, second thing we're gonna do, is we're going to, uh, like here at my kennel, we're gonna work on our schoolwork, okay? So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna do our book learning. We're gonna work on our vocabulary, uh, uh, let's go, come, hop, easy, wait, and stay. And we're gonna work on the development of our physical skills, right? I need a dog that uh, is mind and body are working in synergy together, okay? Because <sighs> it's no good to have a lot of physical potential but not get a chance to realize that potential. Okay, now one of the things about realized potential is when a person is learning to realize potential, what does that really boil down to? It boils down to work ethic. So in the morning, we go out and we potty, then we come over here to do our book learning, okay? That book learning is work. It's fun, I try to make it pretty fun. We're doing a lot of rewarding, a lot of petting and praising, okay? But ultimately, this book learning is going to get done. Right now, it's 97 degrees, and I'm burning up, and this little dog's burning up, but we're gonna get that work done. That's what we do here, we put that work in, okay? Now. Here's the great thing about putting the work in. Putting the work in is a self-reinforcing habit, right? So once a dog gets in the habit of putting the work in, then what does it take to put in work? It takes impulse control and attention span. So now I'm able to come out here, I'm able to start in on this course, and what starts off is being real hard for the dog, like it has built-in intrinsic rewards. Like used to, getting up here on this thing, like just from Lucy's point of view, this was impossible. She would do it, I'd just really have to lavish the praise on her and really have to lavish the treats on her. But over the course of time, we started coming out here and the other dogs were doing it and Lucy started saying, hey, wait a minute, watch this. I can do it too. And I can do it just as good as the big dogs. I can do it just as good as the older dogs. That's that intrinsic uh, rewarding that I'm talking about. 
Like once the dogs understand that they can do something, then doing challenging things, physically and mentally demanding things, that's a lot of fun for a dog. So that's when we start not needing our hup, hup, our treats so much is because adherence to the pattern becomes self-reinforcing. Now, how does this directly relate, you know, being at home? Okay, so what does the dog want at home? It wants attention from its owners and it likes to go visit with the neighbors down the street. <clears throat> In the beginning, Lucy would get up and that's dominating her mind. She has all these things that she wants to do. She wants to go to see the neighbors and she wants to go chase the squirrels and she wants to get attention from mom and dad. Now what we've done is taken and putting the, we're starting to put, like we're starting to give her the ability to put things in an order and to approach them in a systematic fashion. So here at my kennel, we get up, we go potty. Then we come to the small challenges course. And while we're on the small challenges course, we're doing our vocabulary work and our uh, physical skills development. Okay, but what's really going on, okay, is we're teaching the dogs to have impulse control and have a good attention span. Having a good impulse control and a good attention span is the key to unlocking one's potential. So this little dog, who's perfectly capable of being an awesome house dog, okay, I mean, just a great house dog. She's, she's perfectly capable of being a little adventure dog. She's very fast, she's very smart, she's very sure-footed, but she was so impulsive that you couldn't even leave the door open because she would run out and get in the street, much less go on a hike down by the river and let her off the leash because she would run away because she was trying to get to everything at once. We bring her up here, we say, let's do the first thing, let's go potty. Let's do the second thing, let's go to school. Let's do the third thing, let's wait for long periods of time and let everybody else get their schooling out of the way, okay? And now, once we've done all that, now Lucy can be free to go do what Lucy wants, which in this 97 degree weather, okay babies, is just gonna be to go get in the shade, right? Okay, and that's it, that's my best tip for dealing with little impulsive dogs that like to chase and bark and carry on, right? Give them a pattern, teach them to have work ethic, teach them about impulse control, teach them about how that their uh, adherence to what's expected of them leads to getting to do the things that they wanna do. So no longer does Lucy have to pull on the leash to get to see what she wants. No longer does Lucy have to dart out the door to get she what, what she wants. She understands that to get what she wants, all she has to do is be calm, attentive, and polite, and show that she can come, be still, and have good manners under all levels of environmental distraction. All right, now we'll take a look at Ruby. Same thing. <laughs> Ruby's a great dog. Uh, just uh, didn't have a very well developed attention span, didn't have much in a way impulse control, and had fallen into a pattern of negative attention seeking. Okay, and it's, it's, guys, it's perfectly understandable why dogs fall into patterns of negative attention seeking because <laughs> it works, right? You know, if Ruby grabs your underwear and takes off running through the house, you pretty much got to pay attention to her, don't you? You know, so all we do is we come up here and we say, look, we know that there are some things that seem very natural as it relates to getting attention. Uh, but those don't work up here. And there's no reason to do that. There's no reason to be frustrated. There's no reason to negative attention seek. All you have to come in, all you have to do is come out, 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 out of the kennel every day and show us that you're willing to do a little bit of work. And once you start to make the dogs realize that work is self-reinforcing, that work leads to all the stuff that they want, then instead of like negative attention seeking, you know, then what they start doing is they start to realize, well, hey, look, you know, if I'll just go out there and I'll put a little work in with Stoney, I'll do a little climbing, a little jumping, a little running, a little balancing, then I'm gonna get access to everything that I want. Well, that makes it, you know, it, it, it makes it the obvious choice, you know? <laughs> a dog will take negative attention over no attention. Nobody wants to be ignored. But a dog will take positive attention over negative tension pretty much every time. You can go over that way a little bit. <clears throat> and so that's all you gotta think, guys. When you have these dogs that when you get up in the morning, they start in jumping, barking, you know, darting out the door, uh, tearing stuff up. All you have to remember is that that's their way of getting through the day. And as soon as you throw, show them a more efficient way to get access to what they want, then they'll choose it right? And they'll choose it at first because of the extrinsic motivation, right? You know, you take them outside and you get them to do something and you load them up on the rewards. You know, you're playing fetch with them, you're petting and praising them, you're giving them treats, all that stuff. 
but pretty soon, okay, adherence to those patterns and conquering those environmental impediments become self-reinforcing to the dog. And the dog likes to do them just because the dog likes to do hard stuff, like we all like to do hard stuff. And then after you've got that knocked out, then you say, hey, listen, you get off work. So going to work's fun if you have a good job that's mentally and physically demanding. But if you work too long, well, then it kind of starts to drag on, right? So just always keep that in mind with your dog. You take them out, make sure that you explore the world, and in that exploration, you do a little education. You need to make basic vocabulary. The dog needs to develop uh, basic physical skills. And then show them how the expression of their basic skills translates into access to what they want, which in the short run is treats, petting, praise, tugging, stuff like that. Okay? And in the long run, they get off work, okay, and they can do whatever they want to do. All right, I'll see y'all next week.